Hi hey everyone, it's Chris from Acton again. I want to talk today a little bit about auger fingers and flighting. So our Macdon Combine headers are designed to work on pretty much all the major brand combines. Now one of the issues is the different combines have different size feeder house and they have different width openings. So to compensate for that, on our auger we have removable flighting and we also have auger fingers and you can see that this one has some room for some additional fingers. This combine header now is set up for uh, a CNH configuration. So that is what we call the medium configuration. And what that means is it's matched to, to, as close as possible to the size of the opening of the feeder house. From above here, you can see the opening of the feeder house and look at the position of the opening compared to where the flighting ends. So this is matched to basically draw the crop towards the center and then get it to the feeder house. So our flighting will end just slightly past the inboard side of the um, feeder house. Generally, you don't want to feed right towards the outside. That's where the chains uh, are and sometimes that can cause issues. So this is designed to basically get your crop to about here and here on your feeder house. That is the factory configuration. If that's working for you, that's fine. That'll be work for most harvesting conditions. But again, sometimes you get some abnormal conditions or you get a slightly uh, heavier or lighter crop. So you can customize this if you want. What's common on the wide body combines, and these would be your flagship CNH Lexions for sure, and your Deer S series. Uh, those are all medium configurations, but it's not uncommon to take off some of the flighting. So as you can see, this medium configuration, so it has four pieces of bolt-on flighting. We can't see the other one, it's underneath here. And it has 22 fingers installed. It's not uncommon sometimes to take off one set of flighting. Now what that'll do is that'll make the crop that's entering the feeder house a little bit wider. This is extremely popular on Lexion combines. And what you can also do is you can add additional fingers. So again, this isn't something you have to do, but if you want to experiment a little bit to try and get that last 10% of performance, or again, if you have um, some slightly abnormal conditions, this can help with your feeding. If this was, for example, a gleaner, which has a very small feeder house, we would have still four pieces of flighting, but they would be much longer. So you can see here, there's another spot where flighting can attach. So now we would probably have flighting ending somewhere around here and we would reduce the number of fingers for that configuration. Um. All right, so we've moved over to this auger display. So again, just to, just to reinforce what we talked about earlier. So on this auger right here, this side is configured as a medium configuration. So notice that there's one, two sets of flighting and there is room for additional fingers outside the flighting. Typically, where your flighting ends is where your fingers begin, but it doesn't have to be that way. But this would be your standard configuration for the majority of your, what we call wide body combines. Now, this configuration here is now what we call the wide configuration. So it's got one piece of bolt on flighting, and you can see the other one has been removed. And if you look, our fingers, we have additional fingers on this side of the header. So you would never run half your combine wide, half your combine medium. At least I'm not aware of anybody that ever did that. Because again, it would, you would be not feeding to the center, you'd be feeding off. So typically, if we're going to remove flighting, we're going to add fingers. And if we're going to add flighting, then we would remove fingers. So again, if we wanted to convert this wide back to a medium where we'd install another piece of flighting at this location right here. So it would bolt in here and here. And these fingers would then be outside of the flighting. We would remove them and put plugs in. Okay. Narrow configuration for cleaners. You can find this information in your operator's manual or um, on macdon.com. I may be lying, it may not be on MacDon.com. This information is indeed available at MacDon.com under support. 
then Operator's Manuals. Then select your product type, product series and model, document type, then language. Here you can find various manuals, quick cards, parts catalogs, and kit installation instructions and assembly instructions. Or just follow the link in the description below. So for example, our auger is already configured wide. Maybe it came that way. Maybe somebody adjusted it for you. This could be a used header and we don't like it. So we want to go back to the medium configuration. So we already have one piece of bolt-on flighting. We'll have to acquire another piece of flighting. Maybe the guy who took it off has it for you and you can put it back on. So you can see that this would bolt on in place. So there's a couple of plugs here that you would move and we would put just carriage head bolts in here and we would bolt that in place. But now we've got some fingers that are outside of the flighting. So basically what's going to happen is we want all of our crop conveyed to this point or further inboard. These fingers are now going to try and stuff some of the crop in here. And if there's no opening, it's just going to pack up against your, uh, against your feeder house. So we're going to remove some of these fingers. All right, so the process to remove the fingers is fairly easy as long as you can get your hand in here. Now on this cutaway, we've got some additional holes that make this a little bit easier, but all of the augers have access plates. So there would normally be a plate over here. And when you remove the access plate, now you have got access to your fingers. We pull the clip out of the finger. We fight with the clip and now the finger can be pulled out. Now just reach in, pull out the finger and remove it. So now when we rotate over, you can see now, so now we've got a couple of finger guides with no fingers in there. We need to install plugs in here. Otherwise we're going to get a lot of debris inside the auger. So to remove the finger guide and install a plug. So you're going to need a 10 mil socket. Off. Falls inside. All right, so there is our finger guide and we are going to replace it just with a solid plug. You can acquire all this stuff uh, from Macdon Parts. Follow the link in the description to the parts catalog for FD2 flex drapers and FM200 float modules at macdon.com. So on this one, I'm just gonna switch over these little brackets here to hold our threads. I don't believe, oops. If you buy either a guide or a plug, I do not believe it comes with these little T-clips. So you can reuse the ones that were uh, on the original part, or you can purchase new ones as well. These ones are a little tight. So I'm gonna use Mr. Vice here. <laughs> Sometimes they're a little snug. So press them in however you like. All right, so again, you'll have to reach in through the access hole. Go with your Mac down facing north-south. It doesn't matter. Snug these up. Now be careful not to over tighten these because you can break the plastic. If you ever torque, what you can do is you can actually crack the holder and either the plug or the holder, and then the holder or the plug can fall out. And now you've got a finger that's riding directly on steel and that can definitely cause you some issues. And then we will torque this to spec. Power fist, the best there is. All right, if I have the medium configuration and I want to convert it to wide, well then I would be taking off this piece of flighting and I would be adding some additional fingers. So in that case, I would remove the plug, install a guide and finger. So just like we did before, we'll now and install a finger guide, same as before. We can reuse the existing hardware. Now, 
Um, the new hardware will come with some Loctite pre-applied to it. If you want to apply some medium strength thread locker to it, um, go right ahead. So again, through the access hole, I reach in. As a bit of a side note, you'll want to keep an eye on your finger guides. They are a wearable item and they will eventually need to be changed. This area will wear out. Sometimes if you let it go too far, it'll actually wear all the way through and it'll start to wear into the steel. So keep an eye on your finger guide, sort of an annual maintenance check. Have a look at those. If they're getting a little bit too worn, it's time to get some new ones. Again, we'll torque that. All right. Now, when it comes to installing a finger inside your auger, there are additional finger holders that are unused, so they're already there. The auger can support a maximum of 30 fingers. There are enough holders to install a finger in every location. So if you had the medium configuration uh, and you want to switch to wide, you'll have to buy some additional fingers. Uh, but you'll be removing flighting. So there's really not a whole lot to buy. You can buy the finger and the guide as a kit if you don't have them. Look it up in your parts manual and you'll find it. So you'll get, get a guide, uh, a finger, uh, and the hardware. All right, so now to install the finger. So you'll have to go once again through an access hole. Get your arm in there and install it from the inside out. So we get it lined up. Now there's our finger through the hole. So now we have to install it in the finger holder and put a clip on it. To do this on an actual combine header is fussy because you can't get your arm <laughs> where it needs to be. So I'll show the process here just so it's a little bit easier to see and do. So we insert the finger, line it up with the finger holder. Notice that there is a spot there, so we need to line that up and then put your push, push pin in. It's recommend to put the spring clip in so that it's um, going with the same direction of motion. That way, if any debris gets in here, the clip will try and push itself through. If you put the clip, clip in backwards, it's possible that you could get some debris in there. So check mark, yes. Big red X. Mm -mm. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.